Welcome back. Super excited. In this lecture, I'm going to demonstrate how to log into your Red Hat OpenShift Online account and then take a look at the console. So let's navigate first, jumping right in, navigate first to OpenShift.com. Once you're here, let's go ahead and click on sign in on the top right corner. And this will take me to the login page. Remember, we have the Red Hat login, right? So if you do not have it yet, you can simply sign up for the OpenShift Online account once again, if you have not done your homework, right? Which I'm sure you have. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Login with Red Hat. And this will take me to a simple page, my email ID and password. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter the email address and the password. Click Login. And this will take me to the console page itself because once you actually create the OpenShift account it gives you for free subscription right that plan consists of one gig of memory one gig of persistent storage a gigabyte of terminating memory and then of course the help community support is part of this so the only limitation here is that of course you can only create one project right which is good because we are going to create a project later on we're going to delete it create some more maybe some php kick php java and so on so moving forward we are going to in fact be working quite a bit with just the GUI interface as well as the command line the cli tools that i'm going to demonstrate later on as well so perfect once we're logged in notice it gives you an option called open web console and it shows me my active subscription which is the starter plan or the free subscription that openshift provides so let's click on web console opens up a new tab and this is where i'm going to see my catalog page there we go so within the catalog page it's going to display various parts right so apps that I want to create for example whether it's a .NET app cake PHP MySQL Jenkins I can scroll down MongoDB MySQL post PreSQL and so on Python you got it so based on this catalog I can now take a look at moving to the next step which is actually creating an application but before we actually do that Let's just talk about the web console itself so that you're comfortable with the OpenShift online GUI interface. Now, all of this, by the way, can be managed by the command line interface as well. And I'm going to demonstrate that, of course, later on. But to understand the GUI interface of OpenShift online, starting from the top right, notice it gives you your name and then gives you a couple of options, right? One of them is copy login command. All that does is simply allows you to, if you click on this, for instance, let me go ahead and do it, show it to you. The login command is now copied. Where do I use it, right? What's it for? Well, this is for the command line editor. So if I open up my CMD tool, let's say PowerShell or just regular Windows command line editor, I can log in to my online OpenShift account using this particular command line that I just copied okay and just kind of gives me a warning too that a token is a form of password do not share your API token because it uses the API token to log in so let's cancel this and I'm going to demonstrate this later on too but just so that you are comfortable with this GUI interface and that's the objective of this kind of lecture as well so this is what the copy login command does of course I can set the home page so in other words as soon as I log in to OpenShift Online, I have two options. Either I can bring up this catalog page, which you see right here, next time I log in, or if I click on Set Home Page, I would have the option to click on My Project List. In other words, as soon as I log in to OpenShift Online, I will be navigated directly to the My Projects List. Since currently I do not have a project, if I did have a project, it will take me to that page. So let's cancel out of here. 
And of course, I can manage my account. If I click on manage account, it opens up a new tab and it takes me back to my subscriptions where I can add a new plan. If I were to click on add a new plan, it brings me or provides a couple of options. The OpenShift Online Pro is about $50 a month and gives you all of these additional capabilities. I can also choose Fuse Online, which integrates everything fast and online, but a little pricey at this point in time. Okay, so let's close this tab. It's back to our OpenShift Online web console. Notice it also gives you a little help, right? So I can click on the drop down arrow here next to the question mark. I can take a look at documentation. I can tour the catalog. Command line tools is a helpful option about help and system status. So for instance, if I click on command line tools, it brings me to the page where I can directly download based on the version that I'm using. So if I'm using Linux, I can download the zip file or the tools so that I can communicate with OpenShift Online using the command line, right? I remember, I'm gonna demonstrate that later as well. Or if I'm using Windows, I can download the tools for Windows. If I'm using a Mac, I can download the tools for Mac OS. But this is I'm gonna demonstrate in the subsequent lectures. Okay, so let's go back. So now you know that you can directly go to the command line tools and download the CLI tool so that you can use the command line editor. What it also gives you is if there are any issues, right, within the data center, within the OpenShift Online environment, it gives you some warning messages, right? If there are none, you're not going to see this. So this is kind of nice that you actually get to experience that the data center OpenShift Online has some issues. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it so you can actually see. And this opens up a new tab and it's going to list out what's actually happening, right? So the platform upgrade on this particular data center, right, server, the OpenShift Online starter environment is undergoing an upgrade. Well, there you go. No application downtime is expected which is good resource limit issue on starter on this particular data center or this server they're currently investigating right and they're sorry for the inconvenience that's okay if i scroll down it gives me some additional details on each of these servers right each of these locations and tells me that there's 99.94 percent uptime and so on so i can scroll down to just kind of see what's going on with each of these services whether it's the infrastructure itself remember we're looking at the pass which is platform as a service so openshift online red hat is giving us a pass to work on so you can scroll down kind of take a look at the past incidents and so on it gives you a nice history as well which is kind of nice okay all right perfect scroll up and close this tab again let's get back to our web console a couple of other things is take home page tour i'm going to assign this homework to you guys so once you're online just click on this and you can take a look at the tour itself it's going to walk you through a small tour documentation interactive learning portal container development kit youtube and blog so you can navigate to each one of these options for instance, if I were to click on Container Development Kit, it's going to open up yet another tab and will give me the overview of the Red Hat Container Development Kit, which essentially provides a pre-built container environment based on the enterprise Linux so that we can develop container-based applications quickly. And that's exactly what we are going to do, of course, using the web console and I'm going to demonstrate using the command line tools as well. And this is what they mean by when we say run and develop an OpenShift container platform three locally, right? So locally means you can use your CLI and then you can use the OpenShift cluster. You can connect to the online account and you can create projects. You can delete projects. You can do everything. All right, perfect. So let me close this again. Let's navigate back to our web console. 
on the left side notice it says browse catalog right so I can take a look at all of the options languages databases if I click on that middleware CICD right now it's just Jenkins and other as well which is Redis and so on and if you've ever worked with Google Cloud Platform right the Google App Engine most of these are also available in Google Cloud Platform as well so you can actually create all of these apps right sample apps within the Google Cloud as well all right let's go to all and next couple of things quickly before I wrap this up is deploy image import YAML JSON or select from project so if I have an image I can click on deploy image enter some parameters and I can deploy the image onto my OpenShift environment similarly I can import the YAML file or I can select from an existing project and if I scroll down notice there's several other options within my catalog as well on the right side just below the name here it says create project and this is where we are going to go ahead and create a project as we move forward so in this lecture just wanted to demonstrate how to log into OpenShift online and explore the GUI interface and some of the areas that are helpful so go ahead practice in, in one of these if you have any questions post them in the discussion area and I'll be glad to help so I hope this helps let's move to the next lesson